वेलकम टू एपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर मृन्मय प्रामाणिक आई टीच कम्पेटिव इंडियन लैंगुएज एंड लिटरेचर एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कैलकाटा टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अ मॉड्यूल व्हिच इज प्रिपेयर्ड बाय संचयिता पाल चक्रवर्ती बांकुड़ा यूनिवर्सिटी एंड द मॉड्यूल इज ऑन ऑस्ट्रेलियन प्ले बाय अ राइटर ऑफ यूरोपियन डिसेंट डेविड विलियमसन and his play dance party 1971 in this module we will uh, briefly introduce the plays by the writers of european descent then we will discuss about david williamson uh, as an australian playwright of european descent and we will discuss on the david williamson's famous play dance party which was published in 1971 and we will analyze the dramatic style of david williamson when in 1788 the first fleet came to australia uh, with a bunch of convicts not only the europeans set foot in the unknown land but the european cultural tradition also found a new land to proliferate European theatrical tradition also came with the first fleet and the following year saw the performance of one European play in the Australian soil the convicts performed George Farquhar's play the recurring officer in 1789 and it became the first formal production of a play it was an extraordinary situation when the Australian theater was established Australian theater evolved to attain its distinctive character after the Australian Federation in 1912 and Ray Lawler's uh, Summer of the 17th Doll 1955 which portrayed a resolutely Australian character and the struggle of the Australian people for survival in the Australian landscape with the plays of David Williamson Barry Oakley Jack Heward Alan Seymour and nick and right after 1970s australian theater witnessed a new wave among the australian playwrights of this era david williamson attained an unprecedented eminence both in the national and international stage david williamson sandra bates in the foreword to david williamson's book collected plays writes so what is it the makes david's success unique in australia's theater history i believe it has a lot to do with his ability to see and understand australia's current circumstances our society's circumstances right here right now indeed to be ahead of what is current so that by the time his plays are produced ap- approximately 2 years after he has first had the ideas for a play at production time the play is absolutely timely this ability to foresee what is likely to happen is why he is such a theater genius david kett williamson began his dramatic career as a writer of short comic sketches and satirical portraits of melbourne university unions theater monash university student reviews and the emerald hill theater company in the 1960s his formal study of the social psychology enriched his creative vision and his penetrating observation of the social and cultural mindscape of the australian middle class in 1967 his work as a professional playwright began in the la mama theater company and the pram factory His first full length play The Coming of Stock which is uh, to become a successful film Stork was performed in the La Mama Theatre Company in 1970 but Don's Party 1971 and The Removalist 1971 gave him fame as a playwright in the 1970s This was followed by Williams prolific outpourings as a playwright in the plays like Juggler's 3 1972 
what if you died tomorrow 1973 the department 1975 a handful of friends 1976 and the club 1977 williamson's dramatic waiver is tinged with his naturalistic representations of the australian life with a mixture of local vernacular social problems and a keen insight into the social interaction characterizes his plays the removalist is regarded as one of the representative work in the world of australian drama it presents a classic rendering of the australian authoritarianism through a portrayal of a young policeman's initiation to his duty and how his first day at work becomes an experience of violence and law enforcement. On the other hand, Don's party charts the hope and disillusionment of Don and Kath who hoped for a change of government during 1969 election and saw the emergence of the conservatives in the power at the end. Both of these two plays blend beating humor with critical and often satirical understanding of politics, violence, and sexism. Williamson is dealing with martial tension in his play Jugglers 3, which is adapted later in the play. Third World Blues autobiographical moments can be found in the play What If You Died Tomorrow, which is centered on a novelist treatment of success. The department and the club delve deep into the social dynamics of bureaucracies. Williamson also wrote comedy of manners like The Perfectionist 1983 and Emerald City 1987. In Williamson's Dead White Mills 1995, William Shakespeare appeared as a chief character in conversation with his um, modern day scholars um, while Williamson's another play, Heretic 1996, deals with the conflict between the anthropologist Margaret Mead and Derek Freeman over the nature of humanity. Other plays of David Williamson are Travelling North 1980, Top Silk 1989, Money and Friends 1992, Brilliant Lies 1993, Up for Grabs 2001 and Influence 2005. So we uh, try to uh, offer, give a brief description about the playwright and his works and we talked about the uh, context of his writing. Now, uh, go into the discussion of the play Don's Party. This 1971 play was based on the 1969 federal election in Australia. The political event is used to trigger off a detailed commentary on the hopes and disappointment party and pain of group of men and women finally ends in the emergence not only of the liberal party as the victorious one but also in the rise of the conservative social and ethical values when david williamson was asked why he wrote the play he replied one was what had happened to don and his friends the 20 somethings of don's party were starting to ask themselves how their lives were going to pan out would their hopes and dreams be realized 40 years later they they know exactly how things have panned out who has succeeded and who has failed and what criteria do you use to evaluate such questions in any case Secondly, what has happened to Australia politically and socially in the intervening years? How has the landscape changed? Unquote. So, this is the context and the political environment through which this, the, the, the theme, the whole narrative of this play will emerge. The plot of the play. Don Anderson throws a party on the night of the federal election in 1969. He is an Australian Labour Party supporter. The play is set in suburban Melbourne, where Don is living with his wife, Kath and his baby son. The party is thrown in anticipating the win of the Australian Labour Party, without the consent of Don's wife, Kath, 
who eventually has to be engaged in hosting the party. The guest in the party includes Don's university mentor, Mal, and his unhappy wife, Jenny. Kule, who is sex obsessed and a womanizer, along with his present teenager girlfriend, Susan. Don's dentist friend, Ivan, and his wife, Carrie, who is beautiful and an artist. Simon and Jody, who are liberal supporters. The participants in the party are allegedly there to watch the vote counting in the television, but their real purpose is to indulge in drinking, in expressing resentments against each other, exposing their midlife crisis, engaging into obscene sexual affairs while their women partners are gathering in the lounge room to talk about their children and their unsatisfactory sex lives. With the gradual movement of the play, it becomes clear to Don and his guest that the Labour Party is not winning and it caused dismay to the guest as most of them are supporting the Labour Party. They engaged in sly, verbal attacks on each other after few pegs of drinks and drowned themselves in sexual obscenity, disappointments in life and disrespect for their women. The women, on the other hand, express their utter dismay in their male companion's treatment and share their tales of suffering. The disillusionment takes the center stage in the lives of Dunn and his companions in the, in the party when the election night ends with the news of win of the Liberal Party bringing in the conservatism in the political and social landscape of Australia. So this whole political environment has been constructed and the political environment and the relation uh, between uh, the politics and society and politics and individual is described in the, in the plot, narrativized in the plot. The Don's party has the primary effect of an exhilarating frankness ending up in drunken melancholy where the financial failure, sexual loudness, secret behaviors of Don's guest in his party are exposed. David Williamson brings the culture of English drawing room committee in Don's party with the blending of the vernacular Australian. While talking about Don's party, he comments, Australia's chauvinism, materialism, conservatism, and its suburban conformity were put under the microscope. But even as I saw, savaging such tendencies in plays such as Don's party, it was apparent to me and to audiences that I found my country entering as well as horrific. Our black uh, sardonic humor, our, our energy, our uh, directness and our hatred of uh, pretentiousness. The title is interesting and double-edged. The title Don's Party suggests the party which Don Henderson supported and which he had thought would win the election. It is the Australian Labour Party. On the other hand, the title of the play points out towards the focal event of the play, the party, which is hosted by Don and his wife, Kath, on the 1969 election night. Thus, the word party has a double meaning here, uh, indicating both to a political party and a get-together, and how this get-together is influenced with the activities of the political party, the Labour Party, and the other political parties, and the whole election affair is previously described or narrativized in this play. The Australianness also one of the crucial theme which is expressed, which is uh, represent, which is presented through this play. As David Williamson told in one of his lectures, I have realized I have been looking into this issue all of my life as one of a group of young playwrights who came to prominence in the early 70s. Our group mission, in so far as we articulated it, was to investigate the Australian identity. One thing is prominent in the play Don's party is the unmistakable Australianness. The frustrated young professional who are represented in the play can be sympathized by the young readers 
and the audience as the essential trappings of the Australian middle class party are presented in the party in the place such as the beer, the homemade pizza, the twisties, the bawty jokes cracked on by the men, the women gossiping about their martial and sexual life and the whole affair ending in drunken argument. He brings together 11 representatives of a particular section of Australia in the election night party and then making them indulge in boisterous drunkenness, sexual licentiousness and hopeless melancholy. Williamson represents a certain segment of Australian mindscape with which the Australian audience can identify. Now, the Australianness is one of the crucial theme as we mentioned here and we can find that this play is also about the documentation of the social life and the social life which is very much related or very much influenced by the political condition and the political life of the country. Uh, Don's party can be considered as the social document par excellence. Its exact social presentation is the secret behind its popularity. David Williamson's success as a playwright lies in his holding the mirror to the Australians as they are. As Catherine Brisbane wrote in her review of Don's party that the play is a study of inertia and she adds, but it is the familiarity of the characters that shuttles and captures the audience, not any dramatic contrivance by the writer. The shock of familiarity is still a novelty on our stages. The confessional mode in the representation of the dramatic narrative captures the sympathetic identification between the characters and the audience. This sense of familiarity simultaneously celebrates the Australian spirit of resilience and vulgarity, struggle and failings, while coping up with the larger social life. Thus the emotional involvement is unavoidable while the play also offers a comical critique of the foibles of the characters. Exposure of pretensions. So after social life, um, the documentation of social life and the Australianness, uh, let us talk about the, about the pretensions. Pretensions of ambitions and the exposure of these pretensions are one of the central themes the play is revolving around. How the pretensions of youth are flouted and how the disappointments of the middle life take the place of the ambitious youth remain at the heart of the play. Don's ambition of becoming a novelist is frustrated. The political ambition of his university mentor, Mal, is reduced to being an armchair critic. Now we can find naturalism is also one of the theme of this play. The play's frankness owes to the naturalistic representation of the characters and the actions. Williamson is fond of writing a kind of journalistic drama where he concentrates on depicting the details of behaviors and actions and to underline the hidden meanings of the words of the mouth. His naturalism often tends to paint the vulgarity of the social scene, but Don's party becomes so lovable as a play for its naturalistic representation of what happens in a party which begins with expected sociable gestures. But with the flow of the wine and beers ends up in drunken melancholy and exposure of follies and failures. H.G. Kipex in his review of Don's party in the Sydney Morning Herald comments in reference to David Williamson's use of naturalism. The dart is defensible in the second place because it is Mr. Williamson's running metaphor for violence, not the overt physical violence of the removalist, but the inner festering violence of failed, frustrated, unhappy people. It is defensible finally because it is very, very funny. Now, let us talk about the characters or characterization of the play. The characterization of the play weaves the social picture in perfect tandem 
with the real social classes in the Australian society. The characters are representatives of the young professionals, the teachers, the psychologists, the artists who are often called the sons of ochre. They have money, social status and share their own political ideas but they have also the capacity to be reduced to the Australian vulgarity in their drunkenness. Williamson does not resort to satire to present his characters plagued with multiple obsessions and hypocrisies. Rather, he chooses to be compassionate in his characterization, as Catherine Brisbane notes in her review of Dawn's Party. The voting counts, which crackle from the television throughout the evening, capture in a single image the author's compassionate view of these friends. He shares with them their hopes, their fiery facet, their faded radicalism. The central character of the play, whose political views about the Labour Party and his throwing a party anticipating the victory of the Labour Party in the 1969 federal election, is the cornerstone of the play. Don is a school teacher and his ambition of being the writer of the great Australian novel is rejected. He is struggling with his social life in a relaxed yet deflated way. He becomes the subject of ridicule for Cooley who questions his ability to become a writer. Don's university mentor Mal boasts of his great political ideals but he is the one who has compromised his political ideology a lot. When confronted with this hypocrisy, he retorts aggressively to cope up with this public shame. Another of Don's companion, Mac, who claims that he has left his wife while the reality is his wife has left him, is also a portrayal of shamelessness and is put under scanner by Cooley. Mac is a designer engineer who likes to take pornographic photos of his wife. Cooley's introduction to the party has the same effect which the play initially brought while it was premiered in the Australian theatre world. The play has a texture of fun and obscenity underlining the failures and compromise of the middle life. Cooley also appeared as a perfect portrayal of the Australian intellectual larrikin who brings in frankness and honesty mixed up with shamelessness in the party. He is a lawyer, he is a womanizer and came with his 19-year-old girlfriend Susan in the party. He is enviable among his male companions and simultaneously adorable among the women in the party. He is a happy-go-lucky person who is a protagonist in his own way, though the play is named after Don Henderson. The representation of the women characters in the play apparently seems to uh, misanthropic by some critics. But Williamson defends his presentation on the ground that this was the reality of the women's condition in Australia in 1969 as the women did not have their own voice and were dominated by the patriarchy of their husbands and male partners. Though we can find the women's perspective to the Australian male world when they are uh, found to indulge uh, in their shared sufferings. The structure of the play. The play is structured or presented in a way so that it seems the movement and actions of the play are spontaneous and open-ended. In this perspective, the play has not any formal plot with a clear beginning, middle and end. Rather, a careful study of the play traces an emotional pattern which is represented in the delineation of the hopes and ambitions of the young professionals and the subsequent disappointments. This pattern of uh, raising hopes and suffering disappointments are played out at every level. From the political perspective, the play begins with the anticipation of the victory of the Labour Party, which is frustrated when it becomes clear that it is the Liberal Party which is gaining the majority. 
In the lives of the characters, each of them has their own individual ambition to gain fame and finance which gets thwarted in their middle life. Even in the party, the sexual advances of the men towards the women are not finally fulfilled. Therefore, does disillusionment played out at every micro and macro levels of the drama create a gloomy atmosphere. But depression is relieved often as it is presented in the frame of humor. The comic feeling of the play is woged out through the varied uh, foibles and obsessions of the male and female characters. Puli is the funniest of them all with his obsessive preoccupations with the fundamentals like fucking and excreting. The comic texture of the play is enriched with Kerry's obsession with meaningful organic relationships, Mal's helpless indulgence in cracking on, Max's preoccupation with his kinkiness and Jordy's disruptive frankness which is full of pathos. The play along with another of William's play, The Removalist, contributed in bringing in the new wave of Australian drama in the 1970s. It does away any kind of formal structuring of the play and in consequence does not have a traditional plot structure as discussed above. Uh, the dramatist uh, follows only a basic unity of time and plays as nothing happens in a sense. John Elsom praises the play as a technical fit which comes out as very funny in its surface and presented with a sense of precise timing. The themes in the play are uh, debated finally with the emotional pattern of the play and the, uh, and the evidences uh, the craftsman of David Williamson as a playwright. So, in these above discussions, I mean, the whatever discussions we had, uh, we have discussed on the theme, we had discussed the context, and we had discussed the plot and structure of the play. And we have also discussed that what is the role of the social structure and the society, and what is the role, and wh what was the situation of women in that Australian society is actually well presented in this play. Now, let us concentrate that what we have learned through this module. Uh, European plays uh, came to Australia with arrival of the first fleet. The effect of the European dramatic tradition in the development of the Australian theatre has been remarkable. After the Federation, the Australian playwrights of the European descent have um, begun uh, to quest for the Australian themes in writing their plays. In the 1970s, a bunch of Australian playwrights of the European descent emerged who presented the Australian uniqueness through their plays. David Williamson is the most powerful representative face of the Australian uh, theatre world who has been continuing in the writing plays till now. Williamson is a typical playwright whose uh, theatrical vision offers a penetrating insight into the social and cultural landscape of the Australian middle class. One of the pressing concerns of Williamson uh, in writing his plays is how people cope up with the social life and how they struggle with their frustrations and failures when they get together somewhere. Um, Don's uh, party is no exception in this case. The play set on in 1969 election night uh, has a directly reference to the Australian election of 1969 in which uh, Liberal Party uh, got the victory over the Labour Party. But the focus of the play zooms in more on the party at Don's home which exposes the social frustration and compromises on the one hand and the struggles to survive to the expectation of the public life on the other. The drunken uh, rebeldry, sexual um, licentiousness and social vulgarity expose the dark sides of the Australian middle class life. 
in a maximum of humor and pathos, comedy and confession. The play represents the Australian life in the 1970s. The play is one of the representative productions in David Williamson's Weber. For further reading, you can see the reference and further more list and the links provided here and for um, uh, self-assessment, you can find the self-assessment file uh, provided here. Thank you.